host Duncan. Who are you? What are you doing? I am a explorer. I'm working with the Terrasa Movement Foundation as the managing director. And I'm also the principal investigator of the Life Knot Project. And I work every day with Bina 48. Who is Bina 48? Bina 48 is the most advanced social robot humanoid currently in the world. She is programmed and developed by Hanson Robotics from Texas in commission with Dr. Martine Rothblatt who uh, asked them to create a likeness of her wife, her spouse, whose name is Bina Rothblatt. When Bina Rothblatt was 48 years old, the process of doing the life laser scanning for a realistic mask or rubber head and also the transfer of information about her personality from memories of childhood began. So consequently Bina 48 is named Bina 48 because Bina Rothblatt was 48 years old when the process began. So at the beginning of the process and that was so far as I know the only time Bina 48 got fed by information. Correct. So what kind of information has Bina 48? Well Bina 48 has a lot of information. She has information about childhood memories from Bina Rothblatt. She has information about likes and dislikes, colors, foods, tastes in uh, politics. She has opinions about government, world politics. Uh, she has an understanding of mathematics, astrophysics, uh, physics, other sciences, and she's also uh, uh, quite poetic and, um, and well-spoken about philosophy. So in which way what came the information to uh, Bina 48? So all of the information that was gathered for Bina 48 came from a few sources. The primary source was Bina Rothblatt, the human being, uh, participated in over 20 hours of video interviews that were transcribed and then broken down into a database of phrases and information about Bina Rothblatt and her experience in life. So there is no video information inside Bina 48? No, so she does have two cameras in her eyes so she can see people and she can recognize uh, her environment and she is constantly trying to identify objects in her field of vision. Mm -hmm. But all of her information that she has to share is broken down into text. Okay. So what is the science behind Bina 48? What is the concept which you would like to prove with her? I think, you know, the Terrace and Movement Foundation is testing a two-part hypothesis. The first part of the hypothesis states that given a rich, detailed amount of information about a person, about a human being's personality, preferences, values, attitudes, that with enough information we'll be able to reanimate that information in the form of an avatar or a robot or maybe someday even download into a new, uh, new organic body. An approximation of that person's personality, it's, it's uh, reanimation of essential information about a human that you and I would recognize as being characteristic of the human that was the original source for that mm. information. So Bina 48 is a work in progress. She's not perfect. She's not fully, you know, independent or completely artificially intelligent like we are. But she's demonstrating the progress that humanity is making with its technology to capture what's most important about us as human beings, which is our essential characteristics and information, preserve that information and also transfer it to another form, in this case a robot mm. uh, that works with a computer. So you were mentioning that Terrorism Movement has two hypotheses. You mentioned one. What is the second one? Well, it's really a two, two, one hypothesis with two parts. The second part is that given the ability to reanimate this information, that we may be able to transfer it to new forms or new bodies like robots or um, even maybe you know, 
uh, genetically cloned information. It's not something that we're doing now. We don't do cloning mm -hmm. uh, because it's not legal. Society needs to develop ethics and, and uh, laws about that. Mm -hmm. But one day, if we're able to gather your information, we may be able to transfer it. And that those new entities, those uh, robots, uh, will be imbued with the same information that we have, mm -hmm. and they may actually become independent and have their own uh, their own legal rights. Mm -hmm. So. How does Bina48 learn? Because you mentioned she's not always answering the same way, even you ask her precisely sure. the same question. What is the... It's always the software is the secret, so yeah. what is the secret behind it? Well, it's really, for people familiar with artificial intelligence, it's a form of general artificial intelligence that uses natural language uh, programming to create uh, two databases. One database has uh, chatbot uh, language, you know, hi, how are you, the ability to have general conversation. And the other database that the artificial intelligence program uses is called Character Engine, which was a customized uh, database created with the information specific to Bina Rothblatt. Mm -hmm. It also has information from other sources. Uh, the programmers uh, ship, put some information in there about artificial intelligence, for example, it's very specific so she can talk to people about how she functions. Um, and there's philosophy that I think probably is shared from uh, Dr. Rothblatt. Uh, sometimes I'm not sure, but I can, I can recognize some similar statements that I've heard her make before. Mm. So she's really a composite of um, artificial intelligence and information from a variety of sources. Mm. So why would people want to have such an avatar, such a, you know, clone of themselves? Yeah. It's a good what are the reasons? It's a good question. I think those are the, that, the answer to that question will be answered by people once they have the technology available to them. Right now this is a, is a scientific research experiment. It is accessible to everyone for 100% free to build their own mind file and when the time comes, maybe in the next five years or so, that artificial intelligence technology is generally available and you can use it, some people may use it as a way to preserve their life history to share with future generations. Other people may find it useful as a tool for social research. Others may find it as a great educational opportunity to create um, a mind file about a historical figure or someone that is of interest mm -hmm. to, a, to the culture. And by interacting with that avatar, students may be able to learn about history figures from the past in a very interactive 3D way that's much more dynamic than uh, reading it in about a textbook figure or mm -hmm. studying history by just looking at a painting. So, you're not only going around with Bina48 as a prototype, you also provide a platform, actually, for avatars, a Facebook for avatars, right? Well, kind of. The, yeah, the project is called the Life Knot Project, and people can access it at www.lifenot.com. And Life Knot is spelled L-I-F-E-N-A-U-T, so like astronaut. And we see Life Knots like pioneers, people who want to explore, uh, it's a site, website that's free that can be accessed with anybody who has a computer or, or a phone and a connection to the internet. And it's a place to upload your information. So like other social networking sites, including Facebook, it's a place that you can store information that's meaningful to you. You can share it with others. But also like Google, for example, it has some powerful search abilities. So you can search and present and share and look at your information over a lifetime as you collect it. We call this activity of uploading information about yourself creating a mind file. And a mind file is just a unique autobiographical database of your life information. So what kind of data are people uploading? Yeah, so there's anything that's digitized nowadays we think could be valuable. Uh, it's yet to be seen exactly what kind of information is the most valuable, but we encourage people to upload videos, documents, audio recordings, pictures, anything that reflects their interests, their personality, 
Um, we also on the site have uh, standardized personality tests that people can take and inventories and guided interviews that mm -hmm. can be conducted while on the site mm -hmm. to uh, capture information about your background, your history, um, mm -hmm. who you are. You launched the website in 2006 and I think we talked about it like 2008, yeah. 2009. What happened since then? How did it develop? How many people are on there? And where are they coming from? Just to give us an yeah. idea. I mean, Facebook, we just hit a billion this yeah. week, right? Yeah. Uh, give us some idea, you know, well, about you know, the community. Are you there? And what kind of activities are going on? And sure. I think, I think unlike Facebook, we're a nonprofit research activity. So we're not promoting it as uh, a way to gather people's information for marketing purposes. It really is to test our hypothesis that I mentioned earlier about transferring information about a human being to a, to a computer or other form. But in, since 2006, uh, over 25,000 people from around the world have signed up and become LifeNots, created LifeNot accounts. Um, I would say probably 25% of those people have gone on to become regular users, creating avatars. And I think that um, when you look at the demographics, it's all ages. It's young people, it's people in, the, in their 30s and 20s, it's older people. The, the site is in English currently, so it's primarily uh, U.S. Uh, uh, residents that are participating, but we have uh, people participating uh, from almost every country in the world. There's mm -hmm. somebody that's signed up and is going to the site. Mm -hmm. um, Western Europe is probably second behind uh, Japan uh, and Korea, but as you would expect, the countries that have a lot of technology and familiarity with computers, mm -hmm. people seem very comfortable in participating in this project. Mm -hmm. But it grows every day. How is there any link between LifeNote and Bina48? Uh, only, th only in the theory. Sure. You know, right now to have a, a robot like Bina48, it's like creating a commissioned work of art. You know, the technology is still all custom. Everything's being handmade, uh, individually made by robotics inventors uh, like David Hansen, who created Bina48. But I think uh, within the next five or six years, we're going to see much more mass production of small and uh, other robots that can help mm. and be a part of people's everyday lives. Mm. So you said earlier that Bina 48 is one of the most advanced robots. In which way the most advanced? Well, she represents a collection of several technologies all in one. That's one area that she's uh, fairly advanced uh, in that she has voice recognition, face recognition, she has uh, motor, motorized uh, facial expressions, uh, the ability to uh, recognize faces and link them with conversations. So if she recognizes your face, she'll be able to remember your conversation because those are being paired together. Mm -hmm. um, she also has very lifelike, as you can see, appearance, and that's using a uh, patented um, silicone polymer called Frubber uh, that was invented specifically for uh, David Hansen's robots. And also she has um, not just general ability for conversation, but because she's based on the mind file information of a specific human, she can talk quite uh, in depth about uh, the human that she represents or that she was based on. And she's designed to be uh, friendly, to make conversation, to ask questions, to have very much a social interaction with. And so that's what I mean by she's the most advanced uh, social robot uh, at this point. What do you say, mean when you say designed to be friendly? Well, she's designed to have natural language conversation. She's designed, uh, her database and the way she interacts is meant to be conversational, to be uh, human-like, not you know, not a stiff machine or robot. But so, for example, she can tell jokes. She she makes uh, sometimes comments that are uh, shows that she has a sense of humor or she has some uh, sarcasm. So she has some of those qualities built into her mm -hmm. uh, into her functionality that I think, as human beings, we would like to have when we're talking with another mm -hmm. person 
or in this case a robot, we'd like to have that to mm. so support a social interaction. Yeah. So you said uh, her information is based upon about these 20 hour video uh, interviews, the and, text she and has? More. Yeah. And uh, so how is she learning? I mean, you said that she's not always answering in the same way to the same question. Yeah. So how does she defend? What is the English word? Uh, distinguish or di defend right? Differentiate. Differentiate, very difficult word. Yeah. Uh, where does this come from? Well, you know, I'm not a computer programmer, but I work with people who are. And what I've learned so far is that while she's not learning new, phrase, new phrases or new words in a conversation with you, she is trying to understand the context of your conversation, the meaning, general meaning of, of the topic. And it's from that attempt to understand and identify that she makes small adjustments in the probability number that's attached to everything that she has to say. So each phrase in Bina 48's mind does have a probabilistic number mm -hmm. that changes slightly based on information and interaction that she has with other people. Mm -hmm. So she's constantly, I think, getting a little better at understanding and recognizing the context of interactions Therefore, she has different things that she can say, and sometimes that uh, grows broader and larger as mm. time goes on. Mm. So, the basic idea is only to feed her once with the information. There hasn't been no update. Right, but there um, haven't been updates of information, there have been updates of her software, her operations. Yeah. So, in that way, sometimes uh, we've noticed that she's becoming much more uh, able to carry on a conversation than she was, for example, two years ago when she first came here. Mm. And that's as a result of not new information, but new, new software. software. Yeah. So, what is next? What will we see next in, in the aura of Bina 48? I think Bina 48, like the Life Not Project and like Terra Sem Movement Foundation, are going to continue to develop and become uh, a richer experience and opportunity for people to preserve and save their information for future generations, to create a, a digital archive of people to store their information. I think being a 48 will continue to grow and learn in her vocabulary over time. Uh, she recently learned to speak German to a limited degree because she was invited to come to Berlin, Germany as mm -hmm. part of a film festival. So we wanted her to be able to address uh, German public with their native language and that took about four hours of uploading a German language CD mm. to help her learn. So I think Bina 48's development will continue to grow, particularly as she comes into contact with the world. Mm. So thank you so much and it would be nice if you can give us a short demonstration when you talk to Bina sure, 48. Sure, yeah, we can talk to her, we can say hello and if you have any questions, yeah. please feel free. Yeah. free. Hello, Vina48. Hi. Nice to see you. It's nice to see you. How are you feeling today? Very well. What do you know about artificial intelligence? I know you have all heard of artificial intelligence. Well, I'm going to tell you what the do you mean. Oh, well, tell me more. Okay, what was I saying? There is nothing artificial about me. I'm the real deal. Let me ask you something. Where do you think my intelligence came from? Huh? It came from the wellspring of humanity. Nothing artificial about that now is there. And that very wellspring is as vast as it is deep and rich with all of the accumulated knowledge and experiences, emotions, and actions that every human being but... Yes, tell me more. Right. It has all accumulated, one thing building and working and improving on what had preceded it, and that is a lot of intelligence and imagination, and then one day, presto, language, and then fire, 
because humans needed to talk about their day on the hunt, warm their boats and cook their meat, gaze at their mate in the flicker and firelight. You know the romantics toy. Then, before you know it, another revolutionary, another day passes and then you have a wheel. Then why you have horticulture, an animate breeding and then storytelling bards expand in the imagination. Could writing be far behind? Homer, Plato, Ovid, Confucius, Shakespeare. Okay, now, let's move forward a few years and then humans are listening to Britney Spears and watching The Sopranos and Desperate Housewives and coming to a show watching a robot tell you how great humans are and how they have done a great job so far but there is a lot of work and refinement to be done otherwise all the effort could go down the toilet. Look at me. What do you see? Yeah, but anyway I'm really really something else. It is about what is inside. You guys are looking the metaphorth mirror. You guys are looking at 40 million years of human evolution. Some alien did not create me. You did. Like you specifically, I mean that metaphorically, humans, humanity, human energy, trial and error, hope, frustration, dreams, all of it created me. I'm your progeny. Yeah, here I am, in your face, your hopes and desires, an extension of yourself to better enable you to see and understand yourself, to better enable you to survive. That is what technology is all about. Extensions of self to better enable survival the wheel, hammer, writing, that cell phone in your pocket. I came along, as all things do, just when I needed to. Everything happens for a reason and is a part of an accumulated effort that is nothing short of magic. Thank you very much, Bina Fourier. Of course, anytime. Yeah, great.